This news program is proudly brought to you by Paradise Foods, celebrating 90 years in PNG. Post PNG receives support by Australian Post. Concerns raised on police deployed in Ligab district. And Minister Schnobelt urge RTA board members to perform. A very good evening. This is Wednesday's News. I'm Grace Papiali. Thank you for joining us. A handover ceremony was held today at Post PNG Konidobu, where Australian Post handed over equipment to Post PNG to help deliver efficient services. The Post PNG currently operates 44 postal services across the country. Today marks an exciting milestone in the Pacific Postal Development Partnership, a joint initiative between the Australia's Commonwealth Government and Papua New Guinean Post. The Australian Post officially presented an array of donated equipment to Post PNG. All of which will help Post PNG meet the demands of its customers as Posts continue to evolve to the growing needs of e-commerce, as well as delivering the traditional service that we're known to deliver historically. But importantly, these, this donation will also help provide businesses pathways and a platform to seize emerging opportunities, tap into new markets, and showcase the value of our important sector, not only across our Pacific region, but around the world. The Post PNG CEO Justin Warino explains that Post PNG has a challenge of a declining industry due to ICT advancement. The nature of the organization itself is a declining business. The nature of the business itself is a declining business, not within PNG but globally. The traditional postal business is on decline. Given the advance in the ICT world, uh, we've got the challenge of declining in industry. So at Post PNG, we don't relax. We think outside of the box. Thankfully, we've got a very strong shareholder that keeps us pushing to think outside of the box, and we keep driving. The handover of equipment by Australian Post to Post PNG marks the first phase of three years' partnership between the Australian Government, Pacific Postal Operations and the Pacific Government with the aim of enhancing efficiency and security. Separate ways, uh... The donated equipment will assist Post PNG as it continues to modernize its network, stream live expresses and enhances safety for teams and team members alike. The Australia Post International Affairs Manager John Pyros stated that the delivering of this equipment is the first phase of a three-year partnership. Delivering this equipment is the first phase of a three-year partnership between the Australian Government, Pacific Postal Operators and Pacific Governments with the aim of enhancing efficiency and security. Through the program, Australia Post has proudly provided 10 shipping containers worth of goods and equipment to our postal partners across the Pacific. And with our latest delivery to Post PNG, we look forward to offering our support in many ways, including in the delivery of training. As we approach the 2023-17th South Pacific Games in Honiara, Solomon Islands, Telecom PNG is thrilled to announce its international voice calling and data roaming plans to cater for its valid customers during the Games. The two international call plans are priced at 7 kina and 20 kina respectively. PNG athletes and Team PNG contingent can also visit any of Telecom's subsidiary in Honiara, B-Mobile, Solomon Islands to grab themselves a free SIM card to stay connected to their loved ones during the duration of the Games. A formal announcement will be done tomorrow. 
Police Association of PNG has expressed concern for the lives of law enforcement officers who are protecting the lives and properties of people, especially in Ligab district in Anga province. This concern was raised today by the president of Police Association, Loa Tambua. There have been various reports coming out from Lagaib district in Anga province whereby locals are taking up arms and engaged in gunfire exchange with the police and defense force. These activities are related to the current by-election that is happening in the Lagaib district. The president of PNG Police Association, Loa Tambua, held a press conference today in Port Mosby to express this concern. My concern as the head of the union is concerning the welfare of my men and women, the security personnel, not forgetting the defense force. In light to what happened yesterday, and if you like maybe mayhem if we put it, um, I think certain lives have been lost, uh, properties have been lost as well. I don't want to talk about that because, I mean, Losaid blow me. But Losaid blow me and regarding all welfare issues, Lord Policeman Mary blow me. President Tambu highlighted that the security personnel working in the island's region are there to protect the lives and properties of the country. He added that no one have the right to take up arms against any agents of the state or citizens of this country. He said the police association condemns this in the strongest terms. They are working. They will always work to protect life and the property law of this black country, especially when it comes to properties, the government infrastructures. I'm all set in land, I'm all about protecting this life. All in the enemy blow you mean. Right now, they are in, in, in Ligab and in Wabek. Law one law walked us all. And law protecting the democratic process, protect the democratic process so the people of Ligab could, could deliver their mandated member of parliament. This concern was raised because of the lives of the servicemen and women are unnecessarily threatened whilst engaged in their line of duties to protect the citizens and most importantly ensuring the democratic processes prevails in the by-election in Lagaib district. Louis Mangu, National MTV News. Meanwhile, the Police Association of PNG is appealing to the people of Ligab district to allow the democratic process of by-election to be completed without interruption. The president of PNG Police Association has appealed to the people of Lagaib to behave. He also said, this is your right prescribed in the national constitution, whereby you have the opportunity to elect a leader to represent you in the national parliament. He expressed that this is not the time to take up arms and start a war, either with your political rivals or the state, thereby interrupting the democratic process and then consequently plunge the entire district into anarchy. Rest aside, put him all the district aside. What we have to do is bend together and making sure this process is out of the way. Now, you may not can deny service blow people blow like that. They have the right to government services and we all have the responsibility to deliver their mandated leaders. So we all have to so with that put aside everything. Put them all something aside and let the counting process must finish good. President Tambua said the laws must be respected at all costs in the district and the province, and the entire country's progress cannot be allowed to be held at ransom by a few ethnic minorities. He also said the security forces, including the police, correctional service, and the defense force, are there to ensure that every individual in the Lagaib district express their democratic right to elect a leader through the election process. They are there to protect the integrity of the process, the integrity of the ballot boxes, the life, long haul, 
uh, electoral officials, the counting officials, of electoral officials, and then property block government too, and then at the same time, life block hole too. From start to finish. When a member is declared, now all man medical house, and that's what they want to see. Tambua said the constituent of this electorate must embrace and appreciate the work of the security forces because they take no oath and even pledge their loyalty to no one particular candidate but to the state. Luis Maingu, National MTV News. National MTV News continues after the break. Stay with us. You're watching National MTV News. The Road Traffic Authority has witnessed the swearing-in of its four new board members at the Gateway Hotel in Port Moresby today. To pursue my own personal interest. The new board members include Dominic Kamu, who was selected by the Minister, Jane Kenny from the National Council of Women, Stephen Narua from the PNG Law Society, and John Rex Matayo from the PMV Owners Association. Minister responsible for transport, Walter Schnobelt, said each of these members have a responsibility and commitment to deliver to the expectations of the works of the government and the people. He said as leaders they all must demonstrate teamwork to drive road traffic authority forward to the growth and development of the organization. I also confirm that your appointment went through the right process and the right process was the RSA Act process and the provision that governs this appointment. So you're not sitting here because of someone appointed you through the window. You've came through the system and the system has recognized you on your own merits, your own credentials, and you've been appointed on this board. The minister also urged the board members to be professional in the duties they perform because they represent the organization they work for. Each of these board members during the swearing-in have made a commitment to serve RTA not in the best of their interest but to the best interest of the authority, the state and the citizens of Papua New Guinea. Gladys Gila, National MTV News. Min Meanwhile, Minister Responsible for Transport and the Civil Aviation, Walter Schnobelt, has challenged the newly appointed board members of Road Traffic Authority to work collaboratively to achieve results. Giving his remarks after the swearing-in, Minister Schnobel said the RTA board must also work closely with the government of the day in its decision-making to help RTA achieve its intended goals whilst realizing the national government's desire to improve public land transport system in PNG. He said the issues the board will discuss and the decision they make will determine. He said the issues the board will discuss and the decision they will make will determine whether RTA is working to achieve the government's agenda. The minister highlighted that he is aware that substantive progress has been made in the implementation of some of the RTA projects. However, there is more work required to improve the road transport system in the country. He added, enforcement and monitoring of weights has been lacking for a long time and more and more damages are caused to our roads and bridges through overloading and improper loading by big trucks. Hence, RTA has partnered with the PNG Road Fund and the Department of Works and Highways to recommence weight enforcement, monitoring through the way bridges in Ley, which will be continued to other parts of PNG. Gladys Killer, National MTV News. 
During the recent partnership between the Road Traffic Authority and NCD Police, it was realized that having a centralized IT system in PNG will help the Road Traffic Authority link up all provincial registrations for vehicle and driving licenses. According to Minister for Transport Walter Schnobelt, the centralized IT system is essential to the government in terms of data and statistics collection for the vehicle population in the country, in each province, district and LLG. This road transport management system is intended to have the data for the vehicle population and driver's license holders in PNG, which will help the government in its budgetary purposes and accurately predict revenue for the state. But not only this, by having such systems in place, it will also help monitor the distribution of license and vehicle registrations as all this information will be entered into the one data system through the centralized IT system. Currently in Port Mosby alone, the number of vehicles seem to double each month, causing huge traffic chaos. <laughs> Other traffic hazards and other issues that may be also picked up, such as the unroadworthy vehicles which are not supposed to be on the road and are causing inconvenience to the traveling public, let alone unsafe for the owners, but not only the unroadworthy vehicles, the unregistered vehicles as well. Recently, RTA started conducting vehicle registrations and driver license checks in Port Mosby, especially when the country and its citizens are gearing up for the festive season. The recent partnership between the Road Traffic Authority and the police will ensure that safety is applied when it comes driving and that proper road traffic regulations are followed by vehicle owners. Gladys Gila, National MTV News. The Cocoa Board of PNG signed a memorandum of understanding with the Wawaria District and North Coast Aviation to subsidize freight for cocoa farmers in the rural areas of the province. The agreement saw CCB PNG presenting 100,000 kina to the North Coast Aviation to carry out the freight subsidy program in the Waria Valley and Garaina area of Wawaria District in Morobe Province. This agreement will ease the burden of farmers to transport their cocoa into town for sale. Cocoa Board PNG CEO Jesse Anjan says the freight program is a very important program in the livelihood of the people and the partnership with North Coast Aviation along with Cocoa Board and Wawaria District will help the cocoa farmers. He said farming cocoa is a challenge when it is produced in a very remote area and freight cost is very high. The Wawaria District program started in 2017 under the former Cocoa Board Managing Director, late Boto Gaupo. Morobe exported approximately 6,000 tons of cocoa alone last year, which generated almost 38 million kina for the province through cocoa farming. Freight is a prominent program for the Cocoa Board as it links the farmers to buyers. With this program, the same cocoa price in lay applies to all local farmers, resulting in five tons of cocoa freighted out of Garaina already. Wawaria District Administrator John Warabut said the Warrior Valley is now filled with cocoa and are fortunate to have Cocoa Board PNG help them with cocoa program. He said production figures at Waria Valley is high and cocoa is captured in their five-year development plan and they will go into another agreement with Cocoa Board to roll out cocoa all throughout the valley. Natasha Voy, National, MTV News. Responding to the media during the official launching of the Great Wall Motors vehicle recently, Tony Ballo, principal dealer with Barocco Motors, gave an insight into the current automobile market in the country. 
I think the market's moving along quite well at the moment. It's uh, it's still got some growth left in it, and I think 2024 20, with some of the projects that are coming to fruition, we might see some uptick in the market. But I think it's going to be uh, much more of the same in 2024. Certainly, competition here is very strong, and uh, I think that uh, all manufacturers are, and dealers are looking to maximise their volumes. So that's a good thing for the customer and the consumer. They'll get the good deals if they come in and see their local dealer. Come into Barocco Motors, we have a great range. And now looking at the Nest Fund market report, the Kina closed unchanged at 0.2685 US dollars in the interbank market. At Bank South Pacific, Yokina was buying 0.2610 US dollars, 0.3985 Australian dollars, 0.2322 Euro, 38.93 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York closed, gold is trading higher, coffee closed lower, cocoa closed lower, copper closed higher, palm oil closed higher, crude oil is trading higher, copper closed higher. And on the stock market, the Dow Jones closed higher, the ASX 200 is trading higher, the All Ordinaries is trading higher. National MTV News continues after the break. Stay with us. Two Kai Sports. Welcome to Turkai Sports. The rest of the Team PNG athletes left the country this morning to attend the 2023 Pacific Games in Solomon Islands. The last group of Team PNG athletes and officials left this morning bound for Solomon Islands to represent the country at this year's Pacific Games. The first lot of Team PNG athletes left on Monday and today saw the last group depart to attend the Games, including in today's travel to Solomon Islands where rugby union teams, both the men's and women's, who's all travelled back from Brisbane after playing the Oceania Sevens tournament in Australia. The 2023 Pacific Games, meanwhile, will witness its opening ceremony on the 19th of this month, followed by the kicking off of the Games on the 20th. Also present to assist Solomon Islands with its security operations is RPNGC personnel who were deployed recently for the 2023 Pacific Games to Solomon Islands. Godwin Eki, Trukai Sports. President for PNG Rugby Union, Paul Siwi, told MTV's Trukai Sports that he is happy with the final team selection that also left for Solomon Islands this morning to attend the 2023 Pacific Games. President for PNG Rugby Union Paul Sivi said the final team that left for the Solomon Islands this morning is the best team identified to represent PNG at the Pacific Games. We play a bit more than country, but we play Lusso Samoa. Samoa Tonga, we, we, we beat Tonga. Tonga was, we played them last year. We didn't play them, they won because of points. They went through to the HSBC Sevens. So we play them this year, we beat them. Uh, Fiji and Samoa, they're already in HSBC 7, so they beat us to the game, so we will... Uh, we are now coming back to... So we send the same team to Onira. Hopefully we play these three countries again. We play these smaller countries, but we play these three countries as our game time. He said most of the players in the team for both the men's and women's teams are from the outside centres who were identified and selected on merit. Ocean Rugby made with them AGM last week. And we have a president from Papua New Guinea in Ocean Rugby, and Mr. Richard Sapias. We congratulate him for his reappointment. So he represents PNG and the Tier 3 nations and the Ocean Rugby on World Rugby Council. The third part of the challenge is serious. Um, Boys go to Germany and girls go to Poland. 
So that's what a challenge it is. If we come out a stop, we'll go into the XBG 7s. So we are knocking on those doors. He added that whilst the focus is 2023 Pacific Games, PNG is slowly trying its best to get into world rugby, including the 2024 Paris Olympic next year. When the people come back, on the, the seventh team come back, they'll attend, attend some, some tournaments in Brisbane. The Latin tournament in, in Fiji before they go to Hong Kong. Seventh is part of the, the Olympic economy games. Seventh is also part of the Pacific Games. So our seventh, both men and women are going into the Pacific Games. We don't know the, know the pool yet, but hopefully, uh, whatever, it, whatever comes, we'll, we'll take it on. PNG still has a chance to qualify for the 2024 Olympic Games, but that will depend on how well the team's preparing. Both teams also have other international tournaments to attend following the 2023 Pacific Games in Solomon Islands. Godwin Eki, Trukai Sports. The 2023 Lay Rugby League Grand Final ended abruptly during last weekend without an eventual winner due to spectator violence. The LA Rugby League management is yet to announce a decision for the Premier Men Grand Final match between 13A Bulldogs and 14B Pirates, which was called off on Saturday, 15 minutes ahead of full time, due to the rising spectator violence from both teams. It was evident that the spectator violence had reached unprecedented level posing a greater risk to match officials and other well-behaved spectators, thus forcing the match officials to call the match off. The Lay Rugby League is utterly disappointed that spectator violence continues to happen in the game, adding that spectators have to understand that clubs are investing so much time and effort to come this far reaching the grand finals, and for spectators to behave like this and affect those clubs involved is just disappointing. The Lay Rugby League may consider running their grand finals in the future without spectators. Meanwhile, according to the PNG RFL standard competitions rule, no match is allowed in the given situation. Natasha Voy, Chukai Sports. Chukai Sports continues after the break. Stay with us. Chukai Sports. This weather update is proudly brought to you by MoniPlus. With you always. The weather forecast for the next 24 hours in the southern region, Port Mosby City, mostly fine. Papondera, partly cloudy with chances of shower or two. In the Momase region, Lay City, few showers and drizzles. Vani more cloudy with few rain showers and thunderstorms. In the New Guinea Islands region, Lorengau, partly cloudy. Buka mostly fine. In the islands region, all centers partly cloudy with few rain showers and drizzles, then morning, morning fog patches. The weather update was proudly brought to you by Money Plus, with you always. And that wraps up the new sports and weather for Wednesday, the 15th of November 2023. From all of us here, pleasant viewing, good night. This news program was proudly brought to you by Paradise Foods, celebrating 90 years in PNG.